Affinity Designer makes it easy to put text on whatever shape you want. Today we'll look at how to put text on paths and circles and also how to avoid some common frustrations and mistakes. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent and today we're gonna to talk about how to put text on any shape and path you want. So let's start with putting text on a path that we made ourselves. So what I'll do is I'll select the vector brush tool here and I'll just draw a random path on my document. And let's say we wanna put some text on that. Well, Affinity Designer makes this super easy. First, make sure you actually have this object selected. And then what you wanna do is click on your artistic text tool over here. It might be set to the other one, frame text, but just make sure you have artistic text selected. So I'll click that. And now if you hover over your shape here, you'll see a little icon, a T with a swirling curve. That means we can actually place our text there. So I'll click the button. And now I can actually start adding my text. So I typed in my words here and let's look at what actually happened here. So I have these arrows, a green and red arrow. The green is the beginning of my text. So I can drag it back and forth. And the red is the end of the text. Now if I drag it right now, nothing's gonna happen. But what's important to remember is that this text here is going to respect the paragraph formatting options. So right now I have it aligned to the left. So it's aligned to this green arrow. I can center align it. So now it's right between these arrows. Now if I move the arrows back and forth, you'll see it stays centered. I can also right align it. So now it's bound to the end range. Now let me delete this. Let's do this one more time. And one interesting thing is that when I hover over this, if I click and drag, it will preview how big my text is going to appear. So if I went really big, that's probably too big. I'll make it a more reasonable size here. So that's a really useful feature for dynamically changing the size as you put it on the shape. Now when you have this object selected, there's some other controls up here that are going to be useful, especially as we talk about circles later on. So one is this baseline setting. So this determines where your word sits relative to the baseline. So I can make it above that way, or I can make it below this way. It's one of those ones that you wanna experiment with and see what looks best for your composition. I can also reverse the text path. So usually that's gonna put it upside down on the other side. So you can see that it's upside down here. Keep in mind that at any point I can still move these control points. And of course the text is still fully editable. So let me tell you about a couple things that gave me problems when I first started using this tool and hopefully it'll help you avoid them. First, you've probably noticed that when I've added the text here, the original shape goes away and that's how the tool works. So what I recommend is before you make a shape, if you need to keep your original line for some reason or your original circle or curve, make a copy of it and just hold alt and drag away. So then you can leave this back up here and then you can actually type on this text here. And if you want, you can add your shape back under it there but they'll be two separate objects. So I have my curve and I have the words here. But just know that when you put your words on something, that thing will disappear. Another tip is to make sure your object is actually selected when you choose the artistic text tool. So here I'm gonna choose my artistic text and when I hover over it, nothing really happens. And the reason is because I didn't select this object. So let me click on it. Now when I do my artistic text, I can actually do stuff. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing I've noticed is that you can move your text around as we expect, but if you click outside this box here, sometimes it doesn't actually grab it. So if I click over here, it actually doesn't grab it. It's a little inconsistent in that way. So if I click on the top of the M, it's not helping me move it. So when you wanna move this around, I recommend trying to click inside this rectangular area here. If you click on the outer edges, it may or may not work. And finally, let's talk about resizing. So if I resize this shape here, you notice the text is all reformatting. Now that may be good, sometimes you want that. Let me undo it. If you want the text to scale as you resize the shape, you have to click on this special circle here. This one that's on the outside bottom right corner. So if I click on this and drag, now my text actually scales with the path. So clicking on the top right, it doesn't scale. Clicking on the bottom right, it does scale. So that's definitely a handy feature if you want your text to stay in the same position. Okay, now let's look at text on a circle and everything we just learned about text on a path applies to text on a circle. So I'll select my circle here, the ellipse tool, and I'll just drag a circle. Now the formatting doesn't matter because again, we're going to lose this shape once we add text to it. So if you wanna keep it, make a copy of it, but I won't do that for now. For now, I'll just add the text to it. I'll select the artistic text tool. And once again, I can hover over the edge of my shape here, in this case, the circle. And I see the T with the curvy line under it. I'll type something here. And just like before, we see the arrows. We have our green arrow for the start, the red arrow for the end. And the thing about the circle is if I drag the arrows, they will snap to the quadrant points. So you can see it snaps to this edge here. 
and this part will snap to that edge. Now, if you want to have your text centered, again, you have to click the Align Center button. Right now it's left, but I'll click Align Center. I can make it aligned right, but I'll just put it back to the center. And like before, our baseline can have an effect on this. So we can put the text further away, or we can pull it in. Now you can see the text is very bunched up here. We'll look at how to fix that in a bit. Let me put the baseline back to 0%. And this is also a better example of when to use the reverse text path tool. So I'll click this button here. Now you can see that I can actually make it on the inside bottom of my circle. And once again, I could do baseline and put it outside. Now when you're at the end of your text here, you can hit the enter key and I'll add a, another line to it. And this is actually a separate part of the text. So I can say more text. And what you notice is I got two more arrows. There's actually this dark green arrow which is the beginning of my second line of text. I can align it there. And there's this dark red arrow, which is the end of my second line of text. And if I want this to go outside, I can also add it out there. So if you want to add text to the top and bottom of a circle, you can hit enter and add that second line and adjust the spacing and the baseline. But sometimes that gets a little complicated. So if you're doing something complex and it's not working out exactly how you want it, I recommend just creating another circle and adding the text specifically there and just putting them on top of each other. Now I said earlier I'd show you how to fix the spacing and that's when we use tracking and kerning. Now you can see the menu for these options is the character tab and if you don't see that tab you can go to window text character and that's when you get these kerning and tracking options. Now they look a little similar at first so you may be wondering what exactly is the difference. Kerning is when you adjust the space between just two letters and tracking is when you adjust the space between a whole range of letters. So if I triple click on this text here that'll select all of it. The tracking will adjust the spacing between all of the letters. But if I put my cursor between two characters, the kerning will adjust that only that space. So I have my cursor between the M and the Y. If I change this 24 to 100, you'll see that change there. Now, fortunately, there's a nice shortcut for this. If your cursor is between two characters, just hold Alt and press the right arrow to increase kerning and left to decrease. And this works with the tracking too. So if you select all your text, Alt right will increase the space and Alt to left will decrease the space. And if you want to do individual touch-ups, kerning, put your cursor between two characters and do Alt right or Alt left. Now, sometimes it's really just going to depend on the size of your text relative to the path. Some paths are just too complicated and it's just not going to look good. So it's something you can experiment with. Now, since you're interested in putting your text on a curve, I'll give you another quick tip. If you have your text selected here, you can actually choose the warp groups down here. And the arc ones are pretty useful. I like arc horizontal. You can kind of get like an arch going there. You can adjust it as you see fit. You can make it bigger or smaller, of course. And there are handles here where you can do even more fancy things. If you ever want to undo that, you can just take your text and drag it out of the work group and just delete it. So if you want other ways to adjust your text, you can play with these options too. There's also arc, vertical, definitely lots of combinations for you to play with. At the beginning of this video, I talked about the vector brush tool where you could make a curve and put some text on it. If you want to learn more about how the vector brush tool works, I made a whole video on it, so you can check that out. But in the meantime, if you have any questions about text on a curve or a circle in Affinity Designer, feel free to leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.